folks, I'm Keith Bowen, and this is Hard Rock University. Today we're going to talk about integration. Now, this isn't racial integration here, we're talking about component integration. Components, devices, don't extract gold. Systems extract gold. Think if somebody gave you a Jeep Cherokee frame and body, a Chevy V8, a Ford transmission, and said, you've got a car. Well, would you have a car? Would you even want to spend the time and the money to try and put all those components together into a working system? Probably not. Not if you're smart. No. What you want to do is buy a series of components that are designed to be integrated together so that they do their job smoothly and in coordination with one another. Now, I finally integrated the impact mill and my separation table. Still can't show you the separation table. Yes, I know, I know. But it's still not patent applied for. But I can show a lot of the, the system to show you what I mean by integration and why I was so insistent on this impact mill that I use paddles, not hammers, not... Uh, chains and air classification because it all goes together with a number of other things. So let's go outside and take a look at how the impact mill looks today. Holy crap! Why is that bucket way the hell up in the air? Well, there's a simple reason for it. Because now, that bucket becomes the connection point between the impact mill and the separation table. Let me show you how it works in action. Now here's a bucket feeding the impact mill. We're using vibration and gravity to do the feeding. Guess what? No moving parts. There is a moving part. Well, you've got an engine, pulleys, belt, several moving parts, but they all work together. They're all simple and pretty reliable. On the crusher. That impeller is not only pulverizing the ore, but it is also getting a good draft, which is then used to both classify the ore in the classification column, but then also to transport the ore vertically up to the dust collector system. And the cyclone and filter bag also have no moving parts. So the dust now just drops down into the bucket, which instead of having to be manually pulled out and moved over and then fed to a table, just has water being injected into it in, that, in the middle, and the slurry is draining out the bottom. The slurry then goes to the screen on the table to screen out any oversize that would interfere with the operation of the table. The oversize goes to a bucket, the other stuff goes to the table, gets separated, then goes to uh, tailings dewatering and water recirculation. Notice how simple the system is. I was almost getting bored running ore today because there was nothing to do except change a bucket about every five or ten minutes. Today I was running at between 100 and 200 pounds an hour. One test was about 140 pounds an hour. I presume I'll be able to get it somewhere between 150 and 200. All one person, you, know, you can get about 20 pounds in a bucket and get it to feed right 20, 25 pounds. So you're looking at 25 pounds, 200 pounds, uh, changing a bucket every four or five minutes and just staring at the goal, at the device collecting the gold. Now, how much gold did I collect? Here's the gold from about yeah, one bucket. That's about all I had left of the unpulverized ore by the time we got everything. I'll be willing to bet you I can start getting a pretty reliable estimate just from this. That's two inches across. Let's see how much it weighs. So let's see what we got here.
0.60 grams of material which judging by the color is probably yeah between 0.4 and 0.5 grams gold not bad out of a single bucket let's see what the calculations are okay that's the gold I recovered with an integrated system so that's how integration works that's a, a simple example of it big mines have huge capacity they have parallel systems they have a lot of complexity but they use very expensive stuff at very high throughputs and they have redundancy to make things simple as a micro scale miner you don't deal with redundancy whenever possible okay you have to make life simple so let's see how the principles of integration can be used to make a micro scale miner this job a lot easier first rule is kiss keep it simple stupid eliminate every moving part that you possibly can without harming the system that's just the way it works whenever possible replace technology with physics if you look at the old mills in the past they're always on a hillside there's a reason for that they use gravities not conveyors <laughs> and gravity works there's no cost you don't have no energy supply, no moving parts, nowhere, it just is there. So, they would build it on the side of a hill. Um, nowadays they use conveyors, they're relatively cheap and, and reliable, but nevertheless they do fail. They do cost money. I once saw a system where they had a, a grizzly, and a hopper, and a feeder, and a conveyor, and a conveyor, and a screen and a conveyor and a conveyor and then a log washer and then sand screws now look at all those components together and I still haven't got to the extraction part <laughs> okay see every one of those conveyors was superfluous had you built it on the side of a hill okay so in my case that's why it was so important on this impact mill that it also create a sufficient draft to not only use for air classification, but also for elevation. Um, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of those semi trucks going down the road, the big tankers with the cones on the bottom, well, those are pneumatic bulk tankers. They can offload 27 tons of solids in an hour with a blower. <laughs> the bottom tube has air going through it. And they will just blow it. I know, I used to work at a mine where we do that. We'd get a truckload of quick line. Take about an hour to offload that rascal. And it was all done with air. No conveyors, no screws, none of that. Just blow it. So, using the air, both for classification, no screen, can't plug up, can't wear out, nothing like that. Okay, a lot of impact mills will have a screen. It's not like a screen door screen, but I mean like a punch plate sort of screen to try and give you some kind of size control. They wear out pretty quickly and they're of minimal usefulness in my opinion. Um, they do work, but you pay a price for it. In this case, classification is automatic, zero wear parts. Um, then you get the pneumatic transport up to the dust collector and again, physics does its thing. You separate without anything else. You add water. Physics does its thing. So there's no moving parts in all of that system there except for the impeller on the impact mill. That's keeping it simple. And another principle I'm using is you put a bottleneck at the beginning of your system and then make sure everything else is sized so that it can do a little bit more than that. Whatever the, the fluctuation of your first device, everything else can handle that. Um, in this case, it's the impact mill that's the bottleneck. The bucket feeds the impact mill, but if you overfeed it, the impact mill will load up and stop. So that is the 
metering device. Everything else, the table, everything in the dewatering, it all can handle everything that impact mill can put out. So that's the metering device. Nothing else is required anywhere further downstream to control the flows. You adjust how much water you want on things and then just leave it. Everything else handles itself. And that's how I've created this system to do that. What I'm trying to do is create and potentially market a line of equipment that's kind of plug and play. It all works together and call the company Integrated Small Mining Solutions. ISMS. The I is for integrated. So at this point probably I'll create a jaw crusher size more half a ton to one ton an hour whatever I think the hydromatic or whatever pre-concentrator I come up with can handle properly and then build an impact mill that will take one and connect it with two. Well, actually with three, I guess. So you'll have the jaw crusher, the impact mill, then the pre-concentrator, and the concentrates from that going to the table. All single flow, all you do is run your crusher, and by sizing these things properly, all you have to do is keep the hopper above the crusher full. Everything else takes care of itself. Just watch for anything going wrong. So that's the basic principle. Keep it simple. Use bottlenecks to your advantage. Use physics to your advantage. Think about it carefully before you start buying anything. Okay, don't just buy components willy-nilly. Say, well, what am I going to need with this? Is there something that will work well with it, or is this going to screw me up? Is the, is the, the crusher I want, is that going to do five times what this can handle? If so, is that a problem or not? But think it through before you start buying stuff. Otherwise, you're likely to wind up with the Jeep Cherokee frame and body and a Chevy engine and a Ford transmission and wonder why life sucks. So, that's today's lesson. Happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.